we're getting into the gardening season, which means we might be getting out and spraying and using our hand sprayers. And joining us today is Keith Reed with the Payne County Extension Office. And Keith, you're going to talk to us about preparing our hand sprayers so that we're using them accurately. What's the first thing that we need to consider? Hi, Casey. I want to talk about a couple of things today. One is just the, the basic setup of the simple little pump up sprayer so that it will be an effective tool for us. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing we want to do is make sure, of course, it's, we've got it pumped up. We don't ever want to pump it up so that it's a bomb. <laughs> we, we don't want tremendous amount of pressure, but we want enough pressure in it that it, it does a good job of applying the product. The second thing I want to do is practice spraying. And of course, I'm using just clean water here, but I want to practice so that my my pattern, my spray pattern, is, is doing what I need it to do, and that may vary a little bit depending, depending on the product I'm using. And you're talking about the drops I'm talking of about the, the physical size of the drops. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's say I'm using a horticultural oil, and the idea there is that you smother the insects, so you need nice, even, complete coverage. For horticultural oil, I'm going to tighten this nozzle up a little bit so that my droplet size is 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 fairly small and, and the that? oil is kind of a thicker material too it, it is that that gives me a nice a nice solid coverage now if i use that same nozzle setting to spray for example a broadleaf herbicide and maybe the wind was blowing a little bit i'm going to run a high risk of of causing a unnecessary drift and i could easily wipe out my, my neighbor's tomatoes in a worst case example. So you would want to so, increase your droplet so size. In, in that, exactly right. So in that case, I'm going to adjust and I'm going to see, see the difference here. Mm -hmm. Now I don't want to go too far. I don't want to spray like that, but I do want to, I want to just experiment. And I do this on concrete so I can watch it dry and see how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. For the purpose of today's demonstration, Let's say we're going to be applying a herbicide. So I want the larger droplet. So I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay. So after I've done that, I'm going to just step over here on a smooth, dry surface. I like concrete, and I'm just going to practice. And so think of painting a house. Mm -hmm. I go back and forth. I'm shutting my nozzle, my sprayer off, as I make each pass because I don't want to overlap. So I'm just going to practice that as long as I need to until I can come up with a, a nice, even, repeatable pattern. And this pattern is going to vary a little bit with each person, right? I mean, sure. So that's an important point. What I'm doing today is only what works well for Keith Reed mm -hmm. because there's a certain amount of subjectivity in here. I like to walk a certain pace. I like for my width to be a certain width. I don't, I don't want to try to go like this each time because that's hard for me to do a nice job. But a taller person might have a longer exactly. arm and a longer a, span. Exactly, exactly. Now, so. I want to point out you're walking backwards and there's I a know. valuable reason for that. Well, of course. So if I was walking forward, I'm just going to be walking through the, the pesticide as I'm applying it. Uh, first of all, that's going to unnecessarily get it on my clothing, so mm -hmm. I want to avoid that. The second thing is, depending on what product I'm using, that could cause additional harm to the plant or it could uh, render the product uh, uh, less effective. So the next thing we need to do is determine what, I call it a carrier rate. Mm -hmm. We need to determine how much water this sprayer puts out per given area. Okay. Okay. Now, we come over here, we have a little test area set up. So I've used my tape measure and then actually this, this sidewalk crack right here. Okay. So this is an area four foot wide and 25 foot long. Well, it just that's 100 square feet. And it, it's a small enough area. I can do it relatively easily, but it's also a large enough area that I, I feel like my accuracy is pretty good. Okay. If I was trying to do this step over five square feet, I don't think that's a large enough area. Okay. Okay. So, I know I have one gallon in here. So I, now I'm going to come over here and I'm simply going to spray my test area. So 
So you've got your 100 square feet finished now with your consistent pattern. What's the next step? Okay, that looks pretty good. So the next step is to actually measure and see how much water we have left in our sprayer. From the one gallon From that we started. From the one gallon okay. we started with. So let's come over here and do that. I, say, I like to just pour it in a five gallon bucket or a big container so I know I'm gonna catch all of it. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I'm gonna pour that into a container that has a good measurements on it. Okay. And uh, it's important to mention here, do not go grab a measure container, a measuring container out of your kitchen. Yeah, you really uh, need to have completely separate measuring spoons, measuring cups for absolutely. your garage. Okay, so that is, uh, uh, that is uh, two quarts, which would be 64 ounces, and that's full. So I'm just going to dump that out. Once again, it's just plain water. And then it looks like we have... Uh, 16 ounces there. So we had 64 ounces plus 16 ounces. So that's 80 ounces. Mm -hmm. Okay. We started with 128 ounces. Okay. So that tells us we used, if my math is right here, 48 ounces for 100 square feet. Okay. Okay. All right. Of carrier, of, which of, is of the water. water. Right. Of water. Yes. Yes. So 48 ounces per 100 square feet. Most of our, our pesticide labels talk about volumes or, or areas in 1,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So if we simply multiply that, uh, we have 480 ounces per 1,000 square feet. Okay. And so once we have that number, that is something that's going to serve us well for the long term. I want to write that on my sprayer, or if I if I garden, if I keep a, a good garden journal, mm -hmm. that's the kind of information you want to put down, so we don't have to repeat this calibration step. Mm -hmm. And then using so using that, now I can go to my pesticide label, and it might say, for example, apply 1.5 ounces per thousand square feet. Well, let's say. What I want to spray today is one small little shrub. Right. How in the world do I know how many thousand square feet that is? And you don't want to mix up a big amount. Right, right. For so, a small space. Right, right. So I can simply uh, uh, refer back to my known carrier rate, and that really establishes a nice baseline, which lets me do a good job spraying no matter what product I might be spraying. Well, excellent. Thank you for sharing this great information with us, Keith. My pleasure, Casey. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.